After Chuck Yeager broke the sound barrier in 1947 and proved that an aircraft traveling through the pressure wave wouldn't be completely destroyed, there suddenly was a huge push by all branches of the military to have their own supersonic jet fighter. For the Air Force, this was more than doable. But for the Navy, whose aircraft had to take off and land on aircraft carriers, this was a major problem. At the time, the aerodynamics required to allow a plane to break the sound barrier also made them slow to take off and unstable at low speeds. Landing speeds for these planes were very high. Both of these issues would prevent the plane from taking off or landing on an aircraft carrier. The Navy did have one idea though that they thought could work. A fighter that could take off and land on water, much like a flying boat. The Navy issued a request to various manufacturers to request a supersonic jet fighter that could take off and land on water. After a selection process, the Navy gave the contract to Convair. The design that Convair came up with is probably one of the strangest aircraft ever built for any branch of service. It was a delta wing fighter which featured a watertight hull and twin retractable skis that the plane could take off and land on but could also be extended or retracted. Power would be supplied by twin Westinghouse XJ46 turbojet engines, each producing 3,950 pounds of thrust dry and 5,800 pounds of thrust with afterburner. The Navy ordered two XF2Y prototype aircraft to be built in January of 1951. The first prototype was built at the Convair San Diego factory and the first test flight occurred on April 9, 1953 in San Diego Bay. Following the flight of the first prototype testing series, the Navy planned an initial production run of 17 aircraft to further evaluate the feasibility of a sea-based interceptor. Later, this order was reduced to only three more prototypes that were actually built. The underpowered engines caused issues during takeoff. The plane was extremely sluggish. The skis called dangerous levels of vibration as they cut through the water on takeoffs and landings. The skis were mounted on shock absorbing hinges in anticipation of this issue, but Convair had largely underestimated just how bad this problem was going to be. So during testing, the Navy experimented with various different types and numbers of skis, but the problem never fully went away. The armament was four forward firing 20 mm cannons. The sea dart was 51 foot long it had a 35 foot wingspan and a height of 16 feet. It had a maximum speed of 695 miles per hour at 8,000 feet and 825 miles per hour at 36,000 feet. The plane struggled to obtain supersonic speeds. In fact, in level flight, it failed altogether. It required a shallow dive to break the sound barrier, which made it the only seaplane to ever actually break the sound barrier. Then, on November the 4th, 1954, tragedy struck the testing grounds when Chuck Richburg was killed when his sea dart broke apart at 575 miles per hour while carrying out a low-level flight over to San Diego Bay. He was a 31-year Navy veteran who had served during World War II. His body was quickly pulled from the water after the crash, but he was dead. After this deadly crash, performance tests were canceled. Only taxiing and basic flight trials were allowed from that point on. At one point, they even strapped four 1,000-pound rocket boosters to the plane, but the idea was quickly abandoned after it was found that they caused violent pounding loads on the aircraft and pilot. Later, more modifications were tried, but it soon became apparent that hydroski configurations were just not feasible for high-performance aircraft. Trials continued until 1956 when the project was finally discontinued. Only three of the planes ever flew. Engines were never even installed in the last two Sea Dart prototypes built. The four surviving aircraft were retired in 1957 after a series of unsatisfactory results. The problems with the supersonic carrier-based aircraft have been solved by improving aerodynamics and more powerful jet engines being produced. The need for a sea-based fighter to overcome those problems just evaporated. All four surviving Sea Darts are now in museums. One is awaiting restoration at the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C. One is on display at the San Diego Air and Space Museum. One is on display at the Wings of Freedom Museum in Willow Grove, Pennsylvania. And one is on display at the Florida Air Museum at Lakeland Airport. So that is the Sea Dart. Um, had a lot of requests for this video after I did the P6M. Um, pretty cool aircraft, actually. Uh, very interesting concept. Didn't really pan out. I mean, they could have just like given me the money and I could have just said, hey, this isn't going to work, and <laughs> avoided the whole situation. But uh, I guess you don't know something's not going to work until you try it. 
Uh, I appreciate everybody watching my videos. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, and continue to enjoy my content. Thanks.